great view of uh, Cygnus holding at 30 meters. Uh, still in a hold position, just a few more boxes to check before we depart. Again, this is the last milestone before the capture point arrival, just about 10 or 12 um, meters away from the space station. Serena on and Chancellor and uh, Alexander Gerst on board the International Space Station going through some of these final checks before departure. Uh, they will be at the controls of the station's robotic arm today for capture at uh, 4.20 a.m. Central Time. We are in uh, what's called uh, joint operations right now. Uh, as we hold at 30 meters, here in Mission Control Houston, teams working from the space station side of things, and in Northrop Grumman's uh, Flight Control Center over in Dulles, Virginia, Mission Director Zach Dwyer leading the teams over there. Uh, these teams working together, of course, through the visiting vehicle officer, uh, Tom Castleberry, here in Mission Control Houston. As we uh, head towards the final steps, of capturing the Cygnus vehicle uh, on the CRS-10 mission this morning. Two, step three is complete. Crew is ready for Cygnus approach to capture point. We copy, Alex. And the block problems are all centered up now, both cameras. Cygnus is ready to proceed to the capture point. Expect approach to resume shortly. Station copies. So the teams here in Mission Control Houston, teams in Dallas, Virginia, and the crew aboard the International Space Station all ready uh, to depart the 30 meter holding point. Still holding, but uh, shortly the vehicle will be configured uh, for that final um, departure and arrival, departing 30 meters and arriving at the capture point. Should be occurring uh, here shortly.
Cygnus has resumed approach to the capture point. Monitor approach within 30 meters per step 7 in 1 decimal 102. The crew is primed to issue retreat if primary range is less than 6 meters. Station copies, we're in uh, step 7 of 1 decimal 102. VV mode is approach prior range currently 28 decimal 8 and decreasing. We copy. That was Capcom uh, Tamara York here in Mission Control Houston. Good readout uh, uh, of the Cygnus departure and um, uh, confirmation from Alexander Gerst uh, saying that it is, well, currently now just under 28 meters and closing at a rate of uh, just under 0 0.05 meters per second. Pretty slow, but that's uh, part of the design to make sure that Cygnus is going to arrive at the capture point uh, safe and sound. So this is the, uh, the home stretch for Cygnus uh, arriving at the capture point. Once it does and it is captured, uh, there's a couple more steps to make sure Cygnus is ready to be berthed to the International Space Station. Chad, what's the story there? What's happening to Cygnus once it's captured? Uh, essentially, once we're grappled with the uh, with the Ken 2 arm, uh, we'll start going through uh, configuring the vehicle, shutting down the uh, the GNC systems that are no longer needed uh, because they're a big uh, uh, draw on the power. Uh, as you can tell right now, as we're coming up, we're primarily on battery power. Uh, what little bit of light we do get on the solar arrays as well. Uh, and once the arm has a hold of us, uh, and, and once we started shutting down and safing the systems, then the next thing is to configure the power source from uh, from our own internal power to the power it can be provided to us via the the robotic arm uh, through that grapple fixture we were talking about earlier. The PV, uh, the GF, uh, the P stands for power, so it allows the power to come from the ISS via the arm. Uh, to our vehicle and provide what we need uh, as it's holding on and eventually maneuvering us around to, uh, to berth us to Node 1 Nader. There you go. So guidance, navigation, and control, that's the GNC that you were talking about. No need for that because it's already arrived. You don't need to guide it Correct. anywhere. Uh, but the power is a big concern, right? That's why they have the solar arrays for the journey to the International Space Station. But then uh, if you don't need to collect any power, you can get it from the space station, which itself is providing a decent amount of power with those big solar arrays. Correct. And also, since the fact that we have powered payloads on board, you definitely want to keep the power because that's also controlling the thermal environment inside the uh, the large can we call the pressurized cargo module, the PCM. So you want to maintain a, a good environment for it all the way up until the crew uh, attaches it to the station and they open the door. Of course, that's a huge reason why the Cygnus is arriving at the space station now. There's 7,400 pounds of cargo inside. Uh, lots of important experiments, uh, different hardware, as well as some ice cream. you got to keep that cold. Exactly. Cygnus making a good approach. You can see it uh, coming into the view uh, that's positioned in front of the cannon arm 2. That uh, robotic arm will be the one capturing the vehicle today. At the controls is Serena Anand, Chancellor of NASA, and uh, Commander Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency. What you're seeing behind Cygnus now is the Earth, the South Atlantic Ocean International Space Station flying 259 statute miles uh, over the South Atlantic Ocean just east off the coast of Uruguay.
Cygnus is slowly coming into view. Again, the, the rate is pretty slow from the 30 meter point to the capture point, obviously designed that way to make sure it has a safe arrival, the rate about 0 0.03 meters per second at this point. Uh, uh, Cygnus is 17 meters and closing, uh, looking for about 10 to 12 meters where the cannon arm is positioned now. In the back you can see uh, the uh, service components that uh, provide guidance, navigation, control, some power. As Chad was describing earlier, that little white box hanging out to the what looks like bottom from this view. Chad, what is that? Uh, that's uh, the NanoRack deployer that we have mounted on the exterior of uh, the service module. And uh, typically it's a uh, a six-shooter, uh, it's got six different bays within it uh, that we can load up with uh, nano rack or, or small satellites that we deploy out after we leave the station. And on this particular mission, it's got uh, three different satellites loaded up in the, uh, in the bays to be uh, jettisoned at the end of the mission. End of the mission being... Uh you know, we're arriving at the space station now, but the end of the mission being after it departs the space station, right? That's correct. Yes, once uh, typically, uh, it's probably been for the past several missions now, usually as we depart the uh, the ISS, uh, we'll go ahead and, and climb up to our higher altitude, uh, preferred by our uh, nanosat customers, and then uh, do the jettison of the, uh, the nanosats themselves. Uh, and then perform other activities, and then uh, usually it's within one or two weeks after departure of ISS, then we'll go ahead and do our uh, destructive reentry, taking out the trash uh, that was loaded on during the uh, two weeks prior. What a great journey for Cygnus, but we're just at the beginning now. You can see Cygnus coming into the view of the camera at the end of the space station's robotic arm. This is a view from the cannon arm itself. You can see the end of the latching end effector there. The uh, white box at the left, that's what Chad was talking about, the NanoRax deployer. Cygnus coming into view, you can see the service components, even the uh, solar arrays, those ultra-flex solar arrays. And that uh, uh, little circle with the three prongs, that uh, will actually be where the uh, Cannon Arm 2 will be moving in today. And the crosshairs, that, uh, that uh, white bar with the black behind it, that'll be the point that the... Uh, uh, Serena Anand Chancellor and uh, Alexander Gers will be aiming towards to make sure we get a capture on time today, scheduled for 4.20 a.m. Central Time. But of course, there's a series of checks to go underneath everything going smoothly, uh, st still so far for uh, capture of the Cygnus vehicle today. Rate slowing down to uh, pretty much zero at this point. Just a few more chip boxes to check before we have official confirmation of the capture point arrival. CP hold. And now is to confirm that was you confirmed capture point hold per step eight in one decimal one zero two. That was just me reporting the VV mode. We will work on the confirmation in step eight and uh, report back to you. Copy.
So that was a uh, confirmation. Uh, Cygnus holding uh, pretty much rock steady at the uh, capture point, just a little bit over 12 meters away. Uh, could you have a look at the iris on camera three? Uh, I think it's cycling. I might be confused. Uh, if you had uh, experience with that, uh, let us know what we need to do to fix that. Copy. We'll take a look. Now that Cygnus is uh, holding right at the capture point, now the teams are just going a final go, no go. Recycling from the ground. Some copies. Uh, this final go, no go will be the uh, the final steps to make sure that all systems are go and the crew can actually take the controls of the Cannon Arm 2. Um, put it into a mode where it will start moving in closer to where uh, Cygnus is positioned. It's Cygnus's job now to just hold steady as uh, the uh, uh, Serena Anand Chancellor and Alexander Gerst take the controls of the Cannon Arm 2 and move it in to capture the vehicle today. Uh, we see good iris now on monitor one, camera three, and capture conditions are confirmed and crew is ready for Cygnus capture first step bait. Stand by for capture. Standing by. Station Houston, go for Cygnus capture sequence. Step four in one decimal, one one zero. Cygnus capture, begin monitoring the back away cue cards. Station copies, so one decimal, one one zero. We are in step four and we are in the back away cue card. Teams here in Mission Control, Houston, and of course in Dulles and all around the world doing the checks. We are go for capture. Good readout to the uh, to the uh, crew aboard the International Space Station, Serena and Anand Chancellor and Alexander Gerst. All of the milestones complete. Last step is the capture itself. The crew on board will be uh, configuring the station's robotic arm at this time to start moving in to capture. Time is 4.20 a.m. Central Time now, just a few more minutes, and uh, we'll start seeing the uh, arm moving in and uh, get an on-time capture today. Once the Cannon Arm 2 starts moving, there will be a series of milestones before capture, uh, some readouts of the distance from the arm to the uh, capture position over the pin, and then we'll get uh, 
couple stages of capture. There's first stage capture and then second stage. Uh, Cygnus will be officially captured after that second stage and all the snares are closed and ready and locked. Okay, and confirmation, the arm is in motion. We're in the home stretch here for capturing the Cygnus vehicle today. Okay, Cygnus is now in free drift, configured for capture. Cannon Arm 2 is two meters away. one meter away from capture. Again, there's going to be two stages. Now over the pin. Trigger. Snares are closed. Don't worry, this was expected. We have a five second handover of uh, communications. We'll regain that video feed shortly.
and regaining some of those communications. Everything's still looking good, getting, waiting for confirmation of that uh, final stage of capture. Okay, we have confirmed capture at 4.28 a.m. Central Time today. Now 4.29 should hear the confirmed call from here in Mission Control, Houston. Okay. International Space Station and the Cygnus Vehicle 262 statue miles over the South Indian Ocean. And what a beautiful capture, congratulations. As we gather this week to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the International Space Station and the spirit of exploration it represents, we celebrate today the mission of the SS John Young, reaffirming that the spirit of exploration is alive and well today and will be instilled in the generations to come. Congratulations to the NG-10 team. Houston Station on 2, the International Space Station would also like to welcome the SS John Young on board. Many, many thanks to the multiple people and engineers on the ground who helped execute this flawless portion of the mission. Cygnus has not only brought us very important cargo for station operations, but also critical science on multiple fronts, including tissue on a chip and protein crystal growth, which could help find a cure for Parkinson's disease. To John Young's family, and especially Susie, the Expedition 57 crew is proud to have the SS John Young with us on orbit. John flew on multiple vehicles from Gemini to Apollo and the Space Shuttle, and now he is finally flying a long-duration mission on the International Space Station. It is our honor, and we want to thank you for sharing a part of him with us today. And Serena, those were just beautiful words. Thank you. Thank you, Houston, and uh, thanks to all our trainers, especially Linda and Mike, for a fantastic training to get us to this point. Some beautiful words from both Capcom Tamara York here in Mission Control Houston, as well as Serena Anand Chancellor who, with Alexander Gerst from the European Space Agency, uh, captured the uh, Cygnus vehicle today at 4.28 a.m. Central Time. Again, captured time today was 4.28 a.m. Central Time, the International Space Station and the Cygnus vehicle, uh, 262 statute miles uh, over the Indian Ocean.
So once again, after lifting off uh, from the Wallops flight facility in Virginia on top of an Antares rocket just two days ago at 3.01 a.m. Central Time, Cygnus vehicle made a two-day journey uh, to be captured at the International Space Station by Serena Onan Chancellor and Alexander Gerst at the controls of the station's robotic arm at 4.28 a.m. Central Time today. 7,400 pounds of cargo inside, lots of scientific investigations, uh, including some of the ones that uh, Serena Onan Chancellor herself are most excited about, tissue chips and many biological experiments, as well as uh, great facilities uh, like 3D printing facilities and some other investigations. This vehicle, of course, called the SS John Young, as was reflected in some of those kind words from both Serena Onan Chancellor and Tamara York. Uh, the John Young, a veteran of multiple flights, as uh, Onan Chancellor described, including Gemini, Apollo, and uh, the Space Shuttle.